Hi, welcome to DrSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about sinusitis is infection of your sinuses. So what exactly are your sinuses? Your sinuses are basically caverns or cavities inside of your skull, and they're actually located in your face. The reason that those cavities are important is that they reduce the weight of your skull. So you have a necessary bone there if there were no sinuses. And the other important feature is that it actually helps for resonation of your voice. It's just like having a speaker box and then you have ears surrounding the speaker. It's the same thing for the sinuses. They help to resonate your voice as you're speaking. Otherwise everyone would sound pretty nasal and would have trouble throwing their voice. So the main sites for these caverns are in the cheeks on both sides. So there's no bone there. And then in the forehead. Now the lining inside of these uh, caverns is just like the lining inside of your mouth. So it can get infected and inflamed and it's subject to the same problems uh, that can happen in, inside your mouth or throat. So you have your lining in here. And normally that lining is nice and smooth. That lining can produce mucus just like um, the inside of your mouth. And these sinuses drain into your nasal passages. Now, in a condition like smoking, where you're taking a lot of noxious chemicals, those noxious chemicals can, can irritate the lining of your sinuses and cause a constant post-nasal drip. So there's a constant stream of mucus being produced inside the sinuses, washing out into your nasal passages and then down the back of your throat. And that can cause a lot of tickling of your throat, throat soreness, and a chronic cough. Another thing that can also do the same thing is allergies. And that's exposure to things like dust and mold um, in the air that you're breathing in. Sinusitis is a little bit different in the sense that uh, typically when we're talking about sinusitis, we're not talking about sinusitis caused by irritation from smoking or allergies. That would be called allergic sinusitis. When we say sinusitis, we're typically talking about bacterial sinusitis. You can also have viral sinusitis which is basically a, a clear runny nose, um, soreness inside these sinus areas, and a lot of um, voice hoarseness. Sometimes you might lose your voice. You might have a low fever. But that usually only lasts for a week. With bacterial sinusitis, it can go on for literally months. What's happening in bacterial sinusitis is that bacteria manage either from the throat or nose to reach into the sinus and once there, if, the, if there's a, a decent amount of mucus there, the mucus actually acts like a, a delicious um, gourmet meal for bacteria. So the bacteria can set up a colony inside the sinus. And then they irritate the sinus even more. And then you get like a catch-22 or a double bind. That the more they irritate the lining of your sinus, the more the sinus reacts by producing more mucus. And then you get even more explosive growth of, of the bacteria. Um, in this uh, scenario, what you expect is you see a lot of green and yellow either post-nasal drip or um, actually discharge from the nose cavity itself, basically a snotty nose. That's usually uh, yellow or greenish. The other thing you'll notice with sinusitis is that you get a lot of pain over your cheeks or you could also get sinus headaches over your forehead. That's just the locations where the sinuses are. The other thing you might notice is pressure in the sinuses, and that's just because of the fluid buildup. And if you lean forward, you tend to feel it even more because of the increased push against the front walls of the sinuses. You may also get fever, but a lot of the time with chronic sinusitis, where the bacteria are there for up to 12 weeks or longer, um, there's no fever. There's just the constant pain and an occasional um, rhinorrhea or snotty nose. Uh, treatment for sinusitis. One natural method is stuff like the neti pot. And basically what that is is uh, saline irrigation. So basically you take a salty solution of water and you inhale it up the nostrils. Some of it washes through the nasal passages and back down the, your throat. And some of it washes out the sinus areas and keeps the, the holes that lead into the nose patent. <clears throat> uh, that helps to also be bacteria static because bacteria don't like a lot of salt. Just imagine the Dead Sea is, is dead because of the amount of salt. 
So bacteria don't like um, salty conditions, so that makes their life a lot more difficult. So saline rinses is a nice natural way of, of helping for mild to moderate sinusitis. Sometimes then we have to still jump in and use antibiotics. And typically the antibiotics we use aren't really uh, nasal. We usually use tablets, so they give it to you orally, and then it goes through a digestive system into the bloodstream and then to everywhere, including the sinuses, and eradicate the bacteria. The other thing we sometimes use is uh, steroid nasal sprays. So these are sprays that you spray up into the nose. And these steroids are anti-inflammatory steroids, not, not bodybuilding steroids. What these uh, steroids do is as you blast them up into the nose, they reduce the inflammation of the sinus lining and settle it back to normal. So that stops the mucus production, basically robbing the bacteria of, of their nutrient source. So that kills them. And that, in uh, essence, is basically sinusitis. There are rare cases where it's so severe that none of these methods will work. And even if you quit smoking, smoking is uh, constant, and allergies also promote bacterial sinusitis because of the constant mucus production, which is a uh, good food for bacteria. But in rare cases, um, these, these methods here might not work. And in those cases, sometimes uh, surgery has to be done. We can tell that we need to intervene in these individuals because in spite of the treatment, the antibiotics, uh, nasal steroids, etc., they continue to complain of having symptoms of sinusitis. And if we do an x-ray or a CT of the sinuses, what we'll see is that the lining of the sinus is still inflamed and there may also be a fluid level inside the sinus. Now the surgical options, there's several. Um, one is inserting a catheter into the sinus and then irrigating it with fluid basically trying to wash the stagnant material out. Another approach, which is a little more severe, is actually removing part of the segment of the wall of the sinus. And the idea with that is that by leaving a large aperture there, you're improving the, the flow or um, the ability of the sinus to drain and empty itself. Another approach, even more severe, is actually either scraping the, the lining of the sinus out, this um, soft uh, material here, or using um, heat or dathermy to destroy or scar that lining. The, the philosophy behind that approach is that if you, if you degrade the lining of the sinus, there's uh, nothing left there for the bacteria to live off of, and there's uh, no source of mucus production left there any longer. So the vast majority of cases of sinusitis, though, will respond to antibiotics, uh, even if it's not the simple oral antibiotics, maybe intravenous and uh, either oral or intranasal steroids. The vast majority of cases do not need to proceed on to surgery, but it is an option that's required in a few people. And that's basically the secrets of sinusitis. And that's it in a nutshell. Thank you for watching and stay well.